Right. We turn our attention it's time for the to the 800 meter final. final. What a race in prospect. It is hard to pick a winner from this one. Three Kenyans, Please two Algerians. And there's one of them on the outside, Slamane Moula. He's been on the podium in all 16 races he's contested this year, the African champion. Now to the world junior champion, Emmanuel Wayonyi. He's still only 17 years of age, bidding to become the youngest medalist in this event's history. Marco Ero. Only one Canadian has ever won a medal in this event. It was Gary Reed with a silver 15 years ago. Arop is the Pan American champion, and he'll have the belief he can shine. But what about this for Peter Boll? Came through as a non-automatic qualifier, squeaking into the final, bidding to become Australia's first global medalist over the 800 for over 50 years. He's known as Wycliffe Kinyamal, but on his bib it says Kise. Same guy, Commonwealth champion 2018. This is his first international event for Kenya since 2018. Jamel Sajati. He's won eight out of his nine races so far this year, some of them indoors. He's a wily campaigner. Emmanuel Correa is the class of the field. He's the Olympic champion and he's the sixth fastest in history. He looks sharp in his semi final, but he's yet to break 145 this season. And Gabriel Tual on the inside for France, a PB in the Paris Diamond League. He might need another one if he's to take a gold or a silver here. Tual France in one, Korea Kenya two, Sajati Algeria three, Kise Kenya four, Bol Australia five, Aerop Canada six, Wanyonyi Kenya seven, Mula Algeria in eight. Five of these men hold major titles, major crowns. On Only one of them can stand on top of the two-lap throne tonight. The final of the men's 800 metres gets underway with a growing sense of anticipation. Career is the Olympic champion, starting second from the inside, second from the right, as we look at it there, between the Frenchman Tual and Sajati. But we haven't necessarily seen his best this season. And has he saved himself for the right time? Muller holding his hands out there to the huge, towering presence of Aerop. He's got himself out of danger. Watch for both of the Algerians on the second lap. They can finish really, really quickly. Pisa say. Out of danger, the Commonwealth champion up onto the shoulder of Peter Boll. No move yet from Korea. The Olympic champion is at the back. They take the bell. One of these men is 50 seconds away from a place in history. No Canadians ever won this title. Arop is majestic out front. He's the Pan American champion. Tual is a little bit boxed on the inside in second place. Kisase and Korea trying to come wide for Kenya. Watch for the two Algerians, they can finish really, really quickly. Kisa say in second, and Korea is now coming. Has the Olympic champion fooled us all? No form to speak of all season. Aerox driving for the line. He'd love to be the first Canadian to win this, but Emmanuel Korea is coming away. He's pushing, he's driving. The lactic acid is taking hold, but the Olympic champion becomes the world champion. And what a second place for Tajati. The Algerian came through for silver. But Emmanuel Career, despite not breaking 145 all season, all of a sudden discovers the turn of speed that took him to the title in Tokyo. And it has swept all before him here in Eugene. 143.71. And Marco Aerop does become the first Canadian medalist in this event for 15 years. The majestic Canadian held on brilliantly for the bronze. But Korea takes gold for Kenya. The Olympic champion adding to his rich list of titles. That was a magnificent run from him. Truly magnificent. At the crucial point of the season, he found his form.
Well, they came through in a high 51, but it was Marco Arop who said, I'm going to push that third 200, really make everybody hurt. And we talk about that, uh, that quote before you come out here. You know, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to hurt. And he made everybody hurt. He really made that race. And so I think down the home stretch, he, came, he became my sentimental favorite just, just to get a medal because he was the guy out front and pushing and doing all the work. But career just measured that absolutely perfectly. And what a time to run a season best. So Jarty ran really well for the silver. He finishes so, so fast. And do you know what? If Korea hadn't been quite as strong as he was, I think he probably would have taken the gold. But there, there was there was real power in those legs over the last 20 or 25. And remember, he was sixth in the 400 final in 2019. He has run 44.2. He's not in that kind of shape this this year, and he's not in 142.05 kind of shape that took him to sixth on the all-time list again three or four seasons ago. But that was a really, really fine run from Korea. And what about that for Marco Ayrot? That's a huge, huge moment for the Canadian middle distance community. He bowed out in the semis in Tokyo. And what I loved about that, he was bold. As you said, Dan, he went to the front at the bell and said, OK, look, I'm going to be the one to dictate the rhythm. I think I can hang on for a medal. If three of you want to come past me, I'm going to make you work. And in the end, only two did, and he gets his moment on the podium. Well, A-Rob, just a natural front runner. He says he likes to be in the front because it keeps his six foot three frame out of trouble. And you see him, he get tangled up just a little. Mula really came charging in from the outside. And, oh, and there you see A-Rob almost get tripped up at the beginning of this thing. But he likes to be out front, but this year he's been running from the back and he's been saving himself just a little bit, but I, he, just, he just couldn't resist himself as they went into that first lap and to take the lead and pull these guys along. But look at this finish. The grit and determination by all of those guys is just absolutely evident. Wanyonyi wasn't far away from the podium. a -Rock hung on really well for third. Wanyonyi still only 17. He was bidding to become the youngest medalist in the event's history. a -Rock was really beginning to feel it here. You could see that massive stride was shortening. Sajati had the quickest momentum at this stage of the race. Korea's head was rocking and rolling. I've never seen him do that before. He was in a, a world of pain. But the pain turns to elation and relief as the Olympic champion became the world champion. You got what is it they say? So what say is it they say about class being permanent? The cream rises to the top. 400 meter runners moving up to the 800, 400 meter runners moving down to the two and the 100 meters. It's a crazy world right now. It's an upside down world to get these quarter milers doing any, everything, going up, moving down. Emmanuel Career strikes at the perfect time this season. A wonderful performance, a second successive global crown after his Tokyo title. Sajati richly deserves the silver, and a -Rock, a moment of history for the Canadians with the bronze. Well, from a men's middle distance race to an epic women's long distance battle, 12 and a half laps to come. Margaret Kip Kemboy, silver medalist in this event three years ago. What will we see from Sifan Hassan? She's the Olympic champion. But she lost out to this woman, Latessa Bet Gide, in the 10,000. Gide bidding to become the third woman to do the 5 and 10,000 meter double. Gudaf Sege looks relaxed, world indoor champion. Silver here behind Faith Kipyagon in the 1500, stepping up to the 5,000. And just a confirmation of the two groups of high jump in the decathlon. Scoitham with a PB. 217, which, by the way, is 963 points. Excellent clearance from Garland in second. Weibo making up some ground, 211. Dubler with 208. Owens Delamere had to work very hard for that 202, as did Lyndon Victor. He'll have some fatigue in his legs come the 400.